Hello, hello. Welcome to the You Are Covered podcast. My name is Hannah Moon Miller. I am your host, and I'm so glad that you are joining me today. We are going to talk about one of my favorite things. There's a few things I'm obsessed with. Obviously, you guys know that I am obsessed with fashion. I absolutely love clothes. I love finding the perfect shoe. I love a good hunt for the perfect bag. Right now, I'm trying to find the perfect bag for me right now. I think that uh, being a mom is just so complicated and hard. And so I want like the perfect bag to just simplify everything for me. And I also wanted something that you know, I can have that's a little bit separate from my diaper bag. So that's like my hunt. And I was going on this little hunt, uh, maybe a few months ago, it might have been like, I think I started the process back in, let's see, it's, it's the end of July now. So maybe in May, I was starting to feel this need where I wanted to see the hours in my day and I wanted to be able to block them out and say, okay, I am seeing a client at the five hour mark, another client at the six hour mark, but then I have a free hour at seven where I can hang out with my daughter. So my planner that I was using at the time, this is not it, but it was kind of like this. It was like a hardcover. If you're watching this and you see, you can see the video, you can see what I'm talking about. It was like hard. It's, it's pretty, it's like a pink color, a powder pink color, but it was a weekly planner. So then you see, you know, your whole week in front of you and it was great, but I just found myself wanting a few things that that planner was missing. And the issue, the big issue for me, and I, maybe I'll circle back. Hold on. Let me put my headphones on. <laughs> maybe I'll circle back on this, but, and let me figure out and make sure that my microphone's where it's supposed to be. Okay. I'll circle back on that. But the the major thing for me is, okay. The major thing for me was that I was carrying around two two books, essentially, a journal and a planner. And I was getting really tired of that and realized that I don't have a ton of time to journal. And I would be, you know, downstairs getting ready with Rayma and I figured out that I, I needed to, I wanted to journal and then I'd have to go back upstairs because I only had my planner. So it would have just simplified life to just have one thing. And it's not like I'm journaling pages and pages. I, I literally want to write down, Hey, Rayma did this today. And that was special. I don't want to have to be doing like a ton of journaling. I don't have time for that. So I realized that a lot of daily planners had like one page on one side and then time blocking on the other, which was great. But there were also about three months long. So with daily planners, they tend to be a lot thicker. Uh, A lot of times people will use like a ring notebook to take in and out of pages, which I understand because again, it is a lot to put into one notebook. Um, Let me show you what I'm talking about with a ring binder. Okay. So this ring binder people will put, and I still will create, I think I'm going to create some printouts for you. So if you like a a ring binder, this could be for you. So you can put in like your month, only your month daily entries in this ring binder. And I think it's really cool. They make them on Amazon and there's like a little section for, you know, all of your uh, cards for your wallet A lot of people who like to keep track of their finances this way will do that. And I love watching that content. I've just loved learning about techniques, about keeping your life organized, uh, and also uh, tracking goals and habits. And if if spending less is one of your goals and habits, I've seen a lot of people use journals to do that. And it's not digital. It's all digital by hand because you'll remember things better. This was another thing that I got. I got like a leather uh, notebook cover and it's literally just a piece of leather and then they have like little elastic rubber bands to 
keep the pages organized so you could put multiple different small notebooks in if you would like inside this little uh, cover. And I played around with that idea too because I was like, well, if I don't like the planners out there, I could create one by putting a bunch of planners together. That one could just get expensive. And then two, it just could get uh, chunky. <laughs> and I needed something that would fit into a diaper bag if I was only taking a diaper bag or fit into a small purse. I have a tote that I, I use all the time. Like I said, I'm kind of in the process of trying to find a new bag that is like mine that fits a notebook fits my, uh, I want my iPad to fit in it and a couple other things that is just essential for me when I'm traveling or when I'm going places and it's not necessarily a diaper bag, but I could also use it as a diaper bag, like a mini one. So I'm in the process of trying to find something like that. So if you have any tips or ideas, let me know. So the other thing that I really wanted to track and like talk about with uh, a planner that's important to me was uh, tracking my uh, my habits. I really enjoy that. And that's something that I think this planner that I had originally really did like create a good habit for me of goal tracking and putting in habits and then keeping a to-do list that was very short. Essentially, the, the, the mindset behind that is that every day you are literally only able to conquer about three or four large tasks in your day. So a lot of times people will feel overwhelmed or discouraged because they have this long list of to do's and it's like, okay, you're not going to conquer all of that in one day. So try and like think of four or five things and then you can feel good. I think even, I think some people suggest only three things, large projects to get done in a day. Um, because that's, that's real. Um, so my, the other thing too, that I was looking for in a, a notebook journal planner was I really wanted a space to track feelings and to write down mindset shifts. So a lot of times when I'm working with clients, my biggest thing is that they are having a hard time saying out loud their feelings. It gets uncomfortable. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes we'll, I'll say like, how are you feeling? And your gut reaction is to describe what is happening, right? You describe, well, of course he did this and this and this. And so this is making me do this and this and this. And so there's like an action word. It's not necessarily a feeling. And that is so normal. It is hard to start checking in with your body because here's the thing about feelings. A lot of times why people don't always want to talk about their feelings or think that they're valid, it's because sometimes you're detached from your body. There's an actual bodily response when you have a feeling and it's tied to your brain. So when we say that, you know, I'm not a very emotional person, it's not true. I mean, the very fact that you can recall memories makes you an emotional person because the things that you can learn from emotions and feelings, uh, it's it's tied to, a, that's how you recall memories. I mean, we've watched Inside Out. That's a great movie and it talks all about that stuff. And I love it so much. I love that we're talking about that now. But then, you know, it's still challenging to name what you're actually feeling in the moment. And so I created this journal so that you can circle how you're feeling. And they're very basic. I think the next time that I create a journal, I will probably use more words or make more complicated feelings. But I think there's like five different feelings. Uh, I don't, I didn't put the feeling wheel in there. That would be another really good idea for a future, future journal. But it's very simple just for those of us who are getting used to uh, talking about our emotions. And it's a really small way to check in with yourself and your body. The other thing is a mindset, a mindset shift. So it's, it's taking captive your thoughts and reframing them. Uh, 
you know, a lot of times it goes back to that Bible verse that I, I, I love, but uh, I think that there's a lot of truth in it. Uh, it's like take captive of every thought uh, and make it obedient to Christ is how the, the verse goes. And it's actually very scientific because in cognitive behavioral therapy or cognitive therapy, you do, you take a thought and you place it with something that's a little bit more positive, something that's help going to help you move forward. Instead of talking to yourself in a negative stance, it's actually making your brain work against you when you're thinking about all of the negative thoughts, all of the negative actions, or just thinking, I'm never going to get through this. I'm never going to conquer this. I'm never going to pass this test. That mindset is not going to get you very far in life. And so helping your brain reframe and think about other things, saying, this is really hard, but I have done something sim- similar in the past and I can do it in the future. I love, love taking what I've been thinking, what I've been feeling and putting it on paper and then putting down what I, another option for myself. So all of that is in this new planner that I just created. I'm so excited about it. I'm going to introduce it to you. We're going to talk about more mental health tips about how you can use your planner for, and, and, and not even if, if you buy the, the abundantly more planner, that's fine. That's great. Thank you so much for supporting me. Uh, but also if you use a planner, these are just some good tips for how you can use a planner for, to better your mental health, but also to just be able to have a healthier lifestyle. And you can do this with any planner. You might not be able to do all the things because like we talked about, it's funny how some planners have some things and some planners do not. So let me just walk with you on what is inside the Abundantly More Planner. This is not going to be the last time we're going to talk about it. So I'll just do a little brief overview. So in the front of the planner, so if you're watching this on YouTube or on the Spotify app and you can see everything, let me just make sure I'm not like sharing all my life secrets. But in the beginning, there's going to be a life wheel so that you can track that. You're going to put down your goals and your dreams uh, for 2024. And the reason why I launched this in July and not January was mostly because I don't agree with having a restart in January. I think that those months are so precious for still going slow. I think that July is a great time to reassess your life and to make some goals for the fall. I think we have the most momentum in the fall, um, July, August, fall months leading up to the winter months can be really good times for productivity and for making new goals and habits. Um, I also had this place where I wrote down a couple of core values. That's another thing that that comes from DBT. And that's a great theory to work with uh, when you're you're kind of having some issues with maybe um, codependency, maybe not knowing where you're going in life, uh, some depression, uh, anxiety is really, is, this is helpful for, but understanding what core values you want to live by, uh, and writing that down, I think for a future, for future reference, I think I'm going to probably add more value words because these were kind of generic. Uh, but it's a good thing to sit down and write out of like, okay, what are my core values? What do I want to live by? What are things that I value in my life and value in the people that I surround myself with. I also put in the front a book tracker. I haven't really written down all of the books that I've read so far in 2024. It's been a list. Uh, and then you've got your typical uh, monthly calendar. And then I have right below, I have the to-do list that you want to accomplish in the month of July. 
Uh, these are all, I mean, you can start anytime. I did not date these. I found that I use my calendars more if I don't de- have the dated ones. So the Abundantly More Daily Planner is not dated. Um, and then on the other column, there's a goal progress. So you're going to write down three goals that you want to start with. And that is again in the front of the book. In the back of the book, you're going to talk about which goals you did accomplish and why, uh, why you didn't accomplish those things. There's also a lot of extra space for writing notes. There's six, it's, it's a six month in review. So what I accomplished, what I'm pr- proud of, I reached these goals, I stuck to these habits. And I just think that it's really helpful to have that. I have to-do lists in the back of the book as well to just uh, have the space to process what you want to do. So then next, it's the habit tracker for that month and then the review of the month. So after you've accomplished the month, like we're close to the end of July. So I haven't actually reviewed the month yet, but I'll go back and I'll review the month. These are the habit trackers. And you know what? I'm surprised at how easy it's been to just track those habits and how fun it's been. I've kind of enjoyed it to see how I'm like doing more uh, of those habits because I'm tracking them. And it's a really simple way to go back and look at your month. Uh, The next thing that I really, really enjoy is a one day journal, one line a day journal. And that is kind of your your week in review. So if you want to use it for planning your week, you can. But I've just used it as writing down what happened in those days. Uh, I had this, I had this like feeling, I've had in my, in the past, I've had times where I don't remember things. And most of it was because I wasn't getting a whole lot of sleep when I was working on a radio morning show. I was really stressed out. Uh, some of it might have been a little bit of this, like, um, the trauma of 2020. Uh and they don't remember certain parts of my life. And I never want that to happen again. And that's when I've been obsessed with journaling. I, I During that time, I was really, really, really uh, into planning and, and getting stuff on a calendar and all the things. Uh, but I wasn't so much into journaling. But after that happened and I realized how much I had blocked out of my memory, I was like, I never want that to happen again because I want to re- remember my life. I enjoy my life. I want to remember it. Uh, it is not the abundantly more planner is not a hardcover. The reason I did this is because it's thick and I don't, I want it to be flexible when it fits into your bag and all the things. Uh, the other thing is, so this is the daily, this is the, what the daily setup is. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, so on the left hand side, it is a bullet journal. That is where you can bullet journal your day. That's where you can add more columns if you want, more sections that you want on your day when you plan your day out. And then the next one is like the daily planner wellness. That is what I'm calling them. This is this sheet of paper I want to in the future uh, get copies so that you can um, get a PDF file and you can put it into your binder journal like one of these. And then that way you can just keep adding as many as you want. So again, not dated. You can put these in. If you don't use all, you know, 30 days of them in the month, that's okay. There's no pressure. But I found that I have been going back and putting in what happened in that day just because it, again, I want to be able to remember my life. And so this is a really good way to do it. There is a section that, uh, has a verse of the day. Um, and I'm really, I really enjoy that because it's a motivation for me to read my Bible and then put that verse and remember it the rest of the day. I have time blocking. So this is a time blocking column for each hour. It is, it goes by hour, not half an hour. Um, maybe I'll change that in the future. You can let me know what you think. I've got a to-do list right here. I've got 
uh, a list of things that you're grateful for. And I love that. Uh, I've been really enjoying that because again, that's helping reframe your life. It is, it is pulling out ways for you to be more positive, to be more grateful. And it really does change how you talk and how do you think and, and ultimately your behavior. Um, so then I have a thought to reframe. I've just been writing down that thought that I, that I want to change. Excuse me. And then you can track the hours of sleep that you've been having. Uh, you can track how much water you've been drinking. And then again, your mood. I call it mood, but it's the uh, feelings. And I have uh, emojis there so that it's just easier, especially if we're just not used to tracking emotions. I might change that in the future. I'm not really quite sure. So again, there's there's like 30 of those pages for each month and every week you stop and you do a a one line a day journal and you can just reassess how your week went and I really have been enjoying it like literally I've been I've been journaling I've been so excited to be using this in August and I'm obsessed like I bring this everywhere with me I'm so glad I did it and so I really would love to hear your feedback like what you think about it it is I believe it's $23 on Amazon it's super easy to get it's gonna be at your door real fast because it's on Amazon and I would just really appreciate the feedback so if you want to give it a try and let me know what didn't work I would love to hear that Um, but yeah that's the abundantly more planner. I want to figure out how to do different colors. I did do a rose color, uh, but I wanted this plated black just because I do, I do think that it's more generic, uh, but I do like the rose. So I'm going to try to figure out how to do different covers. There's just a few ways that I have found a planner to really be beneficial in my own life. Like I said, I think I started having a planner back in 2019. I don't know why I never got into using a planner. I don't think I even really used one when I was in undergrad. You know, all those assignments, I probably would have had an easier time being organized. I think I just winged it. Like life was just coming at me real fast. And that's the thing is I think when you have a planner, you're planning ahead, when you're journaling, when you're writing down what's happening, what took place, I think it really does slow down your life and you can be a lot more intentional with your time and what you want to do with your life in the future. And I think that that's really, really important, especially for me as I am a new mom and I have a beautiful daughter, like I just want life to slow down and to be, you know... uh, intentional. So here's here's a few really great benefits for having a planner. And if you're like, I need that more in my life, please grab this Abundantly More Daily Planner. It is on Amazon. You can also find it on the wardrobe uh, on hannahlynmiller.com forward slash the dash wardrobe. Uh, so the number one thing is structure and routine. Uh, a planner helps you stay organized with your day. It gives you structure, routine. The structure can reduce anxiety and stress by giving you a sense of control over your daily activities. When you know what to expect, you can prepare yourself mentally and physically leading to a calmer state of mind. That's huge. I mean, those of us who are married, you know, it is good to have a calendar because that peace and knowing what is going to happen as much as possible just helps with communication. Uh, Goal setting and achievement. This was so big. Like, it really helped me when I was in my graduate studies to be able to uh, just look back at my progress. I mean, my planner from 2022 and 2023, the things that I actually accomplished from my to-do list, from my goal setting list was incredible. I think the younger version of Hannah would have like never believed that. And I think that it does give you a sense of control and in a healthy way. Like we all desire to know that we have 
a sense of control. And in some areas, we don't have any control over our lives. In some areas, we do. And I think goal setting and looking ahead, having a roadmap is really important and very helpful. So setting goals and tracking your progress in a planner can be very motivating. It can also just help boost your self-esteem. I mean, like seriously. When you set realistic and achievable goals, you create a roadmap for success. Each small accomplishment boosts your confidence and morale, which positively impacts your mental health. Yes, yes, totally. Time management. That's why I really needed to have a time blocker. So effective time management is crucial for reducing stress. A planner allows you to allocate time for work, relaxation, and hobbies, ensuring a balanced lifestyle. By scheduling your tasks, you can avoid last-minute rushes and the associated stress leading to a more peaceful day. Um, I love what James Clear from Atomic Habit says, that time magnifies the margin between success and failure. It will multiply whatever you feed it. Good habits make time your ally. Bad habits make time your enemy. So it's really just managing your time. It's really, really important prioritization. A planner helps you prioritize tasks, focusing on what's most important by breaking down your to-do list into manageable chunks. You can tackle one task at a time without feeling overwhelmed. This methodical approach can signify, uh, it can significantly reduce your feelings of anxiety and improve your mental clarity. Another quote from James Clear from Atomic Habits. It's a great book. I've read it. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. So I I have continually felt this way since, uh, you know, going to grad school, starting a fashion blog, uh, working in radio. I look back at myself, my younger self, and I thank her because of the types of actions that I have been able to make. And that definitely helps me out now as an adult or the older version of myself. So keep that in mind when you're making priorities and and shifting tasks. Um, Reflection and mindfulness is another really great thing that helps with having a planner or a journal. And that's what I was really missing with the other journals. Many planners include sections for reflection and mindfulness. Taking a few moments each day to jot down your thoughts, gratitude, and reflections can help you process emotions and experiences. This practice fosters self-awareness and emotional regulation, contributing to overall mental well-being. A recent article in the Journal of Positive Psychology titled The Therapeutic Benefits of Journaling highlights the profound impact of journaling on mental health. The study found that individuals who engaged in regular journaling experienced significant reductions in stress and anxiety levels by providing a safe space for self expression. Journaling allows individuals to process their emotions, gain insights to their thoughts, and develop a clearer understanding of their experiences. The act of writing enables cognitive processing, which can lead to improved emotional regulation and sense of control over one's mental state. Additionally, journaling has been shown to improve Uh, mood, boosting self-esteem, and promote overall psychological well-being, making it a valuable tool for anyone who's looking to improve their mental health. And again, that cognitive response when writing in a journal is basically the reason why I want to do it Uh, on paper, like old school paper version, because I do have a digital planner through Notion and it just doesn't do the same thing for me. I think that I do it more so for processing how I want to write out some content in the future. That's always really helpful for me because I do like to document and documentation turns into content for me as a content creator. But I do want my day-to-day, like what has happened in my 
you know, 24 hours to be in a paper planner so I can process uh, more about my day. Uh, physical health tracking, that's another one. I know that that's really important for a lot of people and for me included. Like that's one of my um, habits that I'm trying to do. Again, the drinking more water and then working out about 20 to 40 minutes a day is like really, really high on my priority list, especially since having Rayma. So some uh, planners can come with sections to track your physical health, including exercise, meals, and sleep. Maintaining good physical health is closely linked to mental well-being. By keeping track of these aspects, you can ensure you're taking care of your body, which in turn supports a healthy mind, which I totally agree. And I think it's really, really good. That's why we track in the abundantly more daily planner, your sleep, and how much water you're drinking. Reducing information overload. Uh, In this digital age, we are bombarded by several forms of information from different kinds of sources. A planner can help you declutter your mind by providing a dedicated space to jot down important information, deadlines, and reminders. This can reduce the cognitive load on your brain and allow you to focus better and feel less overwhelmed. I think too, it just helps to not have something that like has tabs open on every like web browser, right? It's just nice to be able to focus and be like, okay, it is time for me to journal. It's time to me for me to plan my month. And I just really enjoy it. It really helps me just slow down a lot. So on the blog, uh, hannahlynnmiller.com, I wrote down this uh, a little bit more on this topic. I also found a couple of different studies that you might find uh, interesting that you can Uh, look up and you can read more on Uh, one of those studies is the cognitive offloading. Uh, This talks about writing down information that allows individuals to offload cognitive tasks. Um, Another one would be uh, the pen is mightier than the keyboard, the advantages of longhand over laptop note taking. Um, This one, this is a study done in 2014. The findings said that handwriting notes enhance memory retention. So I think that's kind of interesting. And this is where I have found a lot of my, uh, just kind of like what I wanted to do for the abundantly more uh, daily planner. Uh, There's another study, mindfulness-based stress reduction and health benefits. Um, That study found that reflective writing often used in mindfulness practices helps in enhancing self-awareness and mental clarity. Uh, This practice supports decluttering the mind by promoting a focus and calm mental state. So lots of really good things out there that talks about the benefits of using a, a planner. Again, with Abundantly More Planner, I used some methods in cognitive therapy. I've used some methods in DBT with the whole value setting, finding your values. And then anything with like feelings, it's very, it's so important. It's like the the base of mental health is understanding how you're feeling and being able to communicate that. So I hope that you check this out. Uh, Again, it is on Amazon Abundantly More Daily Planner. I will also link it in the show notes below so that you can get it pretty easily. And I am just so thankful for this community that we can connect in these ways. And I'll keep sharing some more really good uh, uh, tips for planning your day, creating good habits, and improving your mental health. So stick around if you haven't, if you haven't already, uh, make sure you're subscribed. There's a newsletter to subscribe to. There is the YouTube channel and you can of course follow me on your favorite podcast app, whichever one you are using. And I will see you in the next episode. God's got you and you are covered.